Vatican City. At its center, the basilica that bears the name of Jesus' first disciple. St. Peter's Basilica, founded on the site of the burial, and tu es Petrus, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, inscribed in the dome over St. Peter's. It is at the core of Roman Catholicism. But did Peter really travel to Rome to lay the foundations for the Catholic Church? The New Testament says nothing explicitly about Peter coming to Rome, and I think a lot of people would be surprised to find this out. The Apostle Paul, who we know lived in Rome, and whose letters make up half of the New Testament, doesn't refer to Peter being in the city once. He doesn't seem to know of him. He doesn't mention any connection between the Christians there in the city and Peter, and that's a kind of interesting omission. So if Peter's there in the city, why doesn't Paul say anything about him at all? The omission is all the more strange because we know Peter and Paul knew each other. In and around AD 50, Peter and Paul meet at Antioch. They meet there because Peter has come from uh, Jerusalem to uh, see the progress being made by Paul's mission. My brother. When Peter and Paul meet in Antioch, they have a fierce row. You are happy to sit with Gentiles. This is an argument about how Jewish you need to be uh, in the Jesus movement. Paul's big idea is that the Jesus movement should be open to people who are both Jews and Gentiles. We were Jews by birth. But Peter disagrees with Paul. See that you say nothing to anyone. You're a hypocrite. It's a bust up. They part ways at Antioch and they never meet again. Go. After the argument between Peter and Paul in Antioch, Peter vanishes from the pages of the New Testament. This is the last that we hear of him. According to Catholic tradition, at some point in the 50s, Peter went to Rome and he evangelized there. Let us pray. At the same time, church tradition places Peter in Rome. The historian Tacitus tells us the city is a very dangerous place in which to be a Christian. In AD 64, a disastrous fire breaks out in Rome, devastating areas of the city. And Tacitus says that Nero fixed upon the Christians as those responsible. Nero gathered together all the Christians that he could find, rounded them up, and persecuted them. Tacitus says that the Christians were subjected to exquisite tortures. And what he meant by that was that they were the victims of elaborate execution. Um, consumption by wild beasts and, of course, crucifixion. According to third century writer Tertullian, Peter gets caught up in Nero's persecutions in Rome. The apostle is sentenced to be crucified. But according to later Catholic tradition, Peter's crucifixion is very different to that of Jesus. Christian tradition is that Peter was crucified upside down because he didn't think himself worthy to be crucified in the exact way that Jesus was. Catholic tradition says Peter's body is then removed from the cross by fellow Christians and buried. He was supposedly crucified on the Vatican Hill uh, at St. Peter's. And around that place where his bones are is built St. Peter's Basilica. The fact that Constantine built a church in the Vatican suggests that Constantine certainly thought that Peter was buried there, and this is why he initiated this large building project to commemorate Peter. But did Peter live, preach, and eventually die in the Eternal City? To try and discover the truth, Professor Tom Hyam and Dr. George Kazan are carbon dating a relic believed to be from Peter. 
Okay, George, um, the results for the uh, St. Peter Tooth are just about to come off the AMS. And you should see the result any second now, just here. So and it's coming out at 250 to 340 AD. So it's old, but it's not as old as St. Peter. So if it's not St. Peter the Apostle, George, then, uh, then who is it? It may be a simple case of mistaken identity. Um, there was another martyr mm -hmm. called St. Peter mm. who died in around 304. So it may well be a relic of St. Peter, just not St. Peter the Apostle. Uh, well, that would certainly fit with the date. However, this doesn't get us any closer to resolving the great mystery of whether St. Peter actually visited Rome. Or what the status of the Vatican bones is. Exactly. For that, we really need to actually go and sample that material. But with no access to the bones found beneath the Vatican, it's impossible to say definitively if Peter really came to Rome. For many, it remains a historical mystery. It's not impossible that Peter did make the journey to Rome, but there's not enough early evidence to suggest that he did.